What's up guys? So I am in a lifetime athletic club here with Brooklyn and show you her. So I'm here with Brooklyn. Hey. Ooh, hey. <laughs> the front facing screen. Um, and she's about to take me through an epic shoulder workout. So I'm going to put a voiceover over the entire thing and explain everything we're doing. So give the video a thumbs up for Brooklyn and I will see you guys at the end of the workout. All right, what is up YouTube? So this was my shoulder workout with Brooklyn Hill and Brand. Make sure you subscribe to her on YouTube and follow her on Instagram. She's an absolute sweetheart and I loved training with her. We are the same age, so it's really cool to connect with someone else that's my age. So to start off the workout, we did uh, three sets of eight of dumbbell seated shoulder press. One thing I want you guys to keep in mind while you're watching this entire workout is that whatever is on top is doing the work. Top meaning parallel to the ceiling. So for dumbbell shoulder press, you are primarily working the front head of the delt. Um, so on that bench there, we have our chest up, shoulders back, kind of leaning back slightly onto that bench so that the front delt is completely facing the ceiling and therefore is doing the most work. Also, I want you guys to keep in mind that whenever you get the best contraction in a muscle, the most tear is when the muscle is fully shortened. So at the dumbbell shoulder press, if your arm is fully extended, then that delt is fully shortened. So keep that in mind with every exercise here. So this I called the lateral raise tricep of death. Uh, Brooklyn came up with this. So it's 10 normal lateral raises, 10 bent arm lateral raises that you see her doing right here in this clip. So you just bend your arms at a 90 degree angle, lead with the elbow and do lateral raises like that. And then the third movement in the tricep of death is a shoulder complex. So you do a hammer curl, bring your elbows up, up and then push out into a lateral raise and it is absolutely the hardest thing I have ever done for shoulders. We did it with 12.5 pound dumbbells and getting 10 reps per exercise was absolutely brutal. Our shoulders were on fire by the end of this and it was amazing. I am definitely going to be doing this again. But keys with this, you want to make sure you get your elbows all the way up to 90 degrees uh, from your body before you push out into that lateral raise, if possible. By the end, you might not be getting all the way up to that 90 degrees. So here I'm doing the tricep again. So with a lateral raise, the lateral delt, which is the side delt right in the middle of your shoulder, facing the ceiling when you're standing straight up. Um, I sometimes even like to lean forward just slightly so that the lateral delt gets more exposure to the ceiling and therefore is doing the most work as well. So this is a tip that I want you guys to think about with not just shoulders, but with any muscle group. So here you see I'm grinding out the last few of this tri set here. I believe we filmed like the last set or the second to last set but it was absolutely killer. And the mind-muscle connection with my lateral delts after this tricep was insane. And usually with lateral raises, it's hard for me to connect with my side delts, but I mean, this, this exercise made it so easy. So next up, we did a Smith Machine barbell upright row. We did a little bit of a wider grip here. So we did four sets of 10 to 12. Keys for the upright row. Uh, here you're working your lateral delt, a little bit of rear delt, and your traps. So you want to make sure you're pulling up with the elbows and always keeping your elbows above your wrists. So I never let my wrists come above because then it's just a forearm exercise at that point. So elbows are coming up as much as possible and you don't want to be shrugging your shoulders together. You want to keep your traps nice and relaxed and bring your elbows up and out as well. So you see Brooklyn is bringing her elbows out really far, and this is what's gonna get the lateral delt involved. It's almost like doing a side, or a bent arm dumbbell lateral raise because you are bringing the elbows up like that, but in a different path of motion. So next up, we did a supinated grip barbell front raise. Supinated just means underhand grip, so here on the screen I wrote underhand grip. 
So with the barbell front raise, I like using the curved easy bars, the preloaded barbells. I believe this was 25 pounds. So what I'm doing here is very deceiving. It looks like I'm bringing the bar all the way up to my head, but in reality, I'm leading with my elbows and there's almost no tension on my wrists. So you can see that my elbows were coming right up to my shoulder height and my wrists were coming higher just because that was the way I was holding the bar, but I was leading with my elbow so that my, and I'm doing it right here in the plate front raise as well. So I was leading with my elbows and my elbows are coming right up to my shoulder. And so that way I'm getting the most contraction that I can get possible for the front raise. And then this is something that I don't really know where I found it, but this is what I call a plate raise and punch. So you bring the plate up to 90 degrees, bring it in, keep your elbows high the whole time so that front delt is still involved, and then bring it back down. And what I was saying about the front raise, and so you'll see Brooklyn here is doing the exact same thing as me, bringing the elbows up to 90 degrees from her torso and the wrists a little bit higher. So if you're bringing your wrists to your shoulders, then your elbows are not gonna reach your shoulders and that means that your front delt is not gonna reach full contraction. But if you're bringing your wrists above, you are not, you're not overreaching with the front raise, you're just bringing your delt to the point of the most contraction. So a lot of people will say like, oh, you're doing it wrong if you're bringing the weight above your face or above your shoulders. That's not necessarily true. Um, it just depends on if your arms are bent or straight. So here Brooklyn's arms are more straight on her plate front raise. So you can see the plate is just coming to her shoulders. Um, but if she employed more of a bent arm, then the plate would be coming much higher and a lot of people would say, oh no, that's wrong. But look at the elbows. And that is the key there. So then she's doing a plate raise and punch again. All you gotta do is bring it up, keep your elbows high, bring it in, push back out, bring it down. And this absolutely burns your front delts because it's like basically a hold in the front raise, but then you have to do more work. So that was the next tri set that we did, the three exercises back to back to back. We did three rounds of that. And then next we did another tri set, uh, the pec deck rear delt flies. So I'm really particular about how I like to teach these to people. Um, look at my elbows. They are not facing down. I like to pronate my grip. So my palms are facing down and my elbows are as high as they possibly can be and I'm trying to rotate my forearm so that my elbow comes up while I am pushing the pec deck back and I feel it the best that way for rear delts because I'm pretending like someone is pushing against the back of my tricep, against my elbow, and I'm keeping my elbow high so that my rear delt is doing all of the work from the shoulder joint and my traps, rhomboids, and infraspinatus are not doing any of the work. So then we superset that with the steering wheel, so five turns per side. When you're doing these, think about tilting your elbows, not just your wrists, so you're getting your front delt moving. So this instead of this. Remember now. So as I was saying, five turns per side and you saw my little note right there when I was talking to move the elbows again so that the elbows are coming up above parallel and moving rather than the wrists because if your shoulders are just staying stagnant and your elbows aren't moving then your front delt isn't getting any extra work from that steering motion. You gotta make sure you know why you're doing extra work in an exercise like a plate front raise with that added. So here, Brooklyn is doing the same tricep. So again, she's moving her elbows as well as her wrists when she's turning. I know what I'm calling this video. It's gonna be the I can't lift my arms when I'm with you workout. <laughs> oh my god, that is so perfect. <laughs> as I was saying, she's moving her 
elbows as well as her wrists so that when she's turning, she's getting the front delt more involved. And then here, burning out with the plate front raise. At this point, our shoulders were literally fried. And so we just did one more exercise, which you're seeing here. So this is the landmine shoulder press. So it is a barbell attached to a pivot pivot screw into the ground. I guess that's what I'll call it. Um, and we just put a 10 pound plate on there because the bar itself is 45 pounds. If you weren't already aware of that, the bar is 45 pounds. So something around 55 pounds, I guess, was what we were lifting. But because it's on that lever, I'm not sure how much weight it actually was. But keys with the landmine shoulder press are to keep your core tight. I like to put a hand on my hip to further stabilize my core and you're bringing your elbow down to 90 degrees. Um, you want to make sure that you're bringing your elbow not only down but out so you're not stressing your wrist by keeping your wrist in by your shoulder, if that makes sense. You don't want your arm to be completely bent in at the bottom of that, of that press. You see here, my arm is basically coming down into a 90 degree angle far from my body and that's the safest path of motion for your joints. So here, Brooklyn is doing the same thing. And she's, I'm about to demonstrate uh, what she's doing for failure or going past failure to further assist her muscle growth. You got it, girl. Assisted reps. Plus. So guys, that is something I actually really love doing and highly suggest if you want to get a lot of growth in any muscle group is going past failure. So you can see after she failed, she grabbed her arm and helped her right arm. Here she's doing it again. She's helping her right arm get a couple extra reps in. So pushing past failure is going to increase that muscular fatigue and therefore give you more growth in the end. So as I was saying, core tight, feet set. You see my knees are slightly bent in the mirror there. Um, hand on your hip if you want to stabilize your core a little bit more and make sure you're coming down at that 90 degree angle to protect your elbow and wrist joints. So we did three sets of 15 here and honestly the 10 pounds on the bar was pretty heavy at the end of this workout. Maybe if we did it at the beginning it would have been a different story but that just wasn't the case today. So we grinded out three sets of 15 here and I honestly felt it in my abs as well. But that's all. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next voiceover. Bye. All about the angles. Sick angles, bro. Hello friends. Hi. So that was the wrong thing. That was our I always look at that screen. I just hope that no one notices. But that was our shoulder workout. It was absolutely killer. Um, we only did what, like five exercises? Six. Six exercises. With supersets though. Yeah, and or yeah, six exercises or supersets or tri-sets, whatever. But um, yeah, if you try it out, have fun lifting your arms tomorrow or yeah, the next day. Seriously. Um, I'm gonna struggle driving home like this. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is Brooklyn. Definitely check out her channel. She did Vlogmas this past year, so she has a lot of new videos up, and her channel is really awesome. And also follow her on Instagram. And yeah, I just wanted to say that like me and her are the same age. And when I started following Brooklyn, like I, we were probably like in our senior year of high school or like late junior year. And, like I started following her, like she had no fucking clue who I was. <laughs> and, and she was already competing in high school. And she had like two or three years of lifting on me when I was like still like getting out of my cardio bunny phase. And so a lot of times like I'll look at her or I'll look at other people in the industry who have had like way more years of lifting under their belt than I have and I'm like, why don't I have that muscle maturity? Why don't I have that shape? Why don't I have as developed like blank as this person does? And just keep it in perspective, like you never know how long someone's been training. You never know how far someone is into their journey until you meet them and you ask them and you find out. And so she's literally lifted like twice as long as I have. Like I've lifted for barely three years now, I think. Like seriously, maybe two. And she's been lifting for what, five? Yeah, a little over five now. Yeah. Five years. So like when I'm comparing myself to someone, like 
I need to take that into account. And first of all, I shouldn't be comparing myself to anyone, but I just wanted to throw that out there, let you guys know that you are in your own personal stage in your journey and you shouldn't be comparing it to other people. But yeah, I just wanted to say that and I had a really awesome time lifting with Brooklyn. Do you want to say anything? Um, what Marissa was saying about muscle maturity, it takes oh, years, years and years of lifting. I competed at 17 in figure and we were talking about this and my muscle maturity versus older, I was a woman, so it was women of all ages compared to them was a huge, huge difference. So take the time, don't like jump into cutting down right away, build the muscle mass. So when you do cut down, it's easier, you have lines everywhere and it's worth it. Yeah, and that goes for my first competition too. Like I was definitely smaller and skinnier compared to a lot of the women who I was up against. Even in bikini, a lot of the women who do their first shows are like 25, 26 years old and have been lifting for five, 10 years. And so they're gonna have way more muscle maturity. And so that's why I'm taking a full year to just build. And also the longer that you're lifting, like the easier it is for you to kind of maintain a leaner physique. So like for me in an off season, like I will be, I'll like look a little bit thicker and a little bit fluffier and I won't keep as much definition just because I'm only two, three years into lifting. And so you really need to look at the big picture because when you're, you've been lifting for like, five years for say like you're bulking right yeah <laughs> like look at her like <laughs> like that's that doesn't look like someone who's bulking so the longer that you're lifting the better you're gonna look in the long term so just keep that in mind uh, keep your goals aimed at the big picture and not short-term satisfaction because that's not gonna get you anywhere in the long run so like the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Brooklyn subscribe to my channel and see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.